program. I know that has been a key thing for some of the administrators as well, trying to get more certifications into your pathways. So Denise, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Karen. And we'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar all about patient care technician programs. Um, my name is Denise Dubois. I am a senior product manager for RealityWorks, and we do a lot of uh, hands-on training resources for health science and many other areas, but health science is one of our favorite ones. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Molly Kelgren, to have her tell you a little bit about herself. And then we'll also have the third presenter uh, do a quick intro, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So um, Molly, go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Kelgren. I am a nurse by background. I am um, have a, a long and weird history as most of us probably do, starting off um, at the bedside in the adult ICU, went on to teach in nursing programs, directed a simulation lab, um, and eventually ended up with um, my PhD in the use of simulation and nursing programs. So if you want to talk about all that kind of jazz on the side, um, you can always give me a call. Um, I've been with RealityWorks just over a year and a half as their health science education product manager. So I will echo Denise's thanks um, for you taking time out of your days to um, join us today. Suzanne. Hi, my name is Suzanne Metro, and I am a marketing manager with American Medical Technologists, and I will present later on today to talk about our certification program. Excellent. Well, Molly, we'll um, start with you to kick us off today. Sounds great. Okay, so let's just start with why we actually need patient care technicians. And we've done a little digging and figured out which occupational groups have really projected to have the most job growth in the next decade. And although they don't call out by name, patient care technician, of course, these buckets of um, job titles really could easily incorporate the patient care technician. So if you see that job growth, we're going to need to um, help people choose this as a profession. Um, and the only way that we can suggest it to people is if we understand um, the nuances of what it is to be a patient care technician and how to build the programs to get them there. So where do patient care technicians work? Basically anywhere is the easy answer to this. Uh, a wide variety of nursing settings from nursing homes, hospitals, clinics, um, blood bank centers, uh, so, because of the wide variety of potential for where people can work, that should really draw in a wide variety of people who have different pre preferences for um, the type of environment that they feel most comfortable in. Okay, so quick agenda for what we're going to talk about today. Um, we are going to start with identifying resources for building pathways, starting super broadly and talking about how do you build a pathway period, what kind of resources are there for you starting any pathway program, then get narrower and narrower. We'll talk about um, resources that are available to you specific to development of health science pathways, and then specifically about patient care technician pathways. Um, then later on in the presentation, we'll um, give you a bunch of resources, um, tons and tons of resources for you to take home with you. Um, and then we will wrap up with a question and answer session at the end. Okay, so let's start with actually understanding the role of the patient care technician. Students often wonder what the differences are between different career paths within health science. So let's take a moment to break things down and compare nursing assistants to medical assistants to patient care assistants or technicians. So please note that ultimately patient care technicians and patient care assistants are really synonymous. Um, but during the course of this presentation, we will be referring to them as patient care technicians or PCTs, um, but really um, we're, we're referring to both job titles. In terms of certification, you can, nursing assistant requirements really vary from state to state. So if your students become certified in your state, if they move, 
it's really likely that they're going to have to recertify in their new state. However, certification for both medical assistants and patient care technicians are recognized nationally. And that's a huge um, bonus for them if they understand that they can um, certify once and they can take that certification with them is a really important point. In terms of responsibilities while on the job, nursing assistants are primarily clinical in nature, assisting with activities of daily living and patient, patient movement and transfers. Those are common examples of nursing assistant duties. Medical assistants and patient care technicians both build on the foundation of the nursing assistant duties with additional responsibilities on top of that. Patient care technicians often include phlebotomy procedures and EKG knowledge. Medical assistants likely have those same advanced skills along with things like collecting vital signs, some types of medication administration, as well as having an administrative component to their job, including checking patients in and out of their appointments and answering phones. Simply put, nursing assistant is the entry-level position. Patient care technician falls in the middle, and medical assistants have the highest level of responsibility of the three positions. The salary levels reflect this as well. The hourly wages and expected industry growth listed here are from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The job classification of patient care technician is relatively new, which is why there isn't really current data about that specific job growth for the role. But if the leveling of responsibilities with the amount of schooling and wages is consistent, we could expect the outlook for patient care technicians to fall in the middle of that 11% to 29%. The data here is general, though, and may vary from state to state. Here's another image of how an organization is distinguishing between patient care technicians and medical assistants. These type of graphics may help students to distinguish between which path they feel better suited for. So how do we help the students who choose the patient care technician pathway? Let's talk about building a program. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna talk about resources that are available to you at every stage in your planning process. So we'll start right now with the broadest level of resource. So any pathway program. Later on, we'll get more and more specific and we'll break it down further. So here are the six key elements for developing career pathways. These elements are important to consider for any pathway program you develop, including health science. We'll talk about several of the six of these, but not all. Funding and measuring system change will not be topics that we cover today because we could easily spend 45 minutes on each of those topics separately. The graphic that um, we pulled for this is from a 142 page document devoted to the details about developing pathways. So if you'd like a little light reading about the topics we won't be covering, um, we'll recommend this. Um, the link is at the bottom of the slide if you're interested in pursuing that on your own. We will touch on a couple of the others, but really we'll be spending the majority of the time on the topic of designing patient care technician programs. This is the curricular piece and is likely the piece that you have all been tasked to figure out. Involving both local healthcare industry leaders and clinical professionals in your pathway development is critical. How can you understand what local employers are looking for in a healthcare professional if you don't ask? consider putting together a healthcare advisory council. Choose these from a variety of settings and level of responsibility to get a variety of viewpoints and input. Meet on a regular basis, perhaps quarterly. Have a frank dialogue and ask, what are you looking for in your patient care technicians? Does your course content align with what they're looking for in the patient care technicians that they will be hiring? To lighten the load, think about combining your advisory council with other health science specialties to get the most information in the most efficient manner possible. Use your advisory council members to form partnerships. Are they willing to allow students at their location for field or job experiences or job shadowing? Also, are they interested in coming in to be a guest speaker in your classes? Engaging employers is one of the six key elements for developing career pathways as seen in the earlier slide. 
Many districts require that any career pathways created lead to industry recognized certifications or credentials of some sort. In order to find the right certifications or credentials for your program, ask the right questions such as, does your state department recommend a specific certification or testing agency? Are your instructors licensed to teach patient care technician courses? What are local employers looking for? Is employment transferable? And what is the cost of a certification or a specific credential? If you're developing a program, make sure you research and find out what to do so your students get certified properly. Are there other certifications that students can go after, for example, CPR, that go hand in hand with the PCT certification? If we think back to the key six elements for developing career pathways, certifications and credentials are part of the step for aligning policies and programs. Okay, so that's generally what you need to look at when you're developing any pathway. So let's narrow our focus a bit to starting a health science pathway. Let's begin with careertech.org. This site houses a plethora of resources for any and all career pathways. If we navigate to the health science portion of the site and then locate the career cluster frame, we can get an understanding of which health science careers fall into which pathway. So you'll notice that patient care technician is not specifically listed here anywhere. But as I mentioned, it's a relatively new uh, job description, job title. Um, but within the therapeutic services column, you'll see similar roles, certified nursing assistant, medical assistant, licensed practical nursing, and registered nursing. So we can safely assume that the role of patient care technician, if it were listed, would be in this column. So now that we have identified which pathway we wanna focus on, we can dig more deeply on the careertech.org website. Under the therapeutic services portion, we can see two options, knowledge and skills statement and plan of study. Let's talk about both. Your first option under the therapeutic service pathway is the knowledge and skills statement. Clicking on this link will lead you to a 21 page document that outlines both general and specific learning objectives for the last three sections listed here. The green essential knowledge and skills section, the red cluster knowledge and skills section, and the blue pathway knowledge and skills section. This is a great resource if writing learning objectives is not your forte. Even if you don't use them word for word, they can provide an awesome starting point. The breadth of information here also gives you peace of mind that you are not omitting any really important pieces when you're creating your health science pathway program. Here is one example of a knowledge and skills statement specific to the therapeutic services career pathway, which is where the patient care technician program fits. You can see that it focuses on effective communication. You will also notice that the specific expected student learning outcomes included here. So again, if writing these types of outcomes is a struggle for you, you have ready-made items that have already been created for you. If you do write your own, you can use these items to check your program to see if you have any gaps in how you are assessing your students. Your second, second option in the therapeutic services portion is the plan of study. This document provides an example of how you might lay out a full program of study, including both secondary and post-secondary courses. Having a master document like this is vital to ensuring that all required components are covered in your program of study, and it helps to keep the objectives of each course well-defined. It's a one-stop shop to help you visualize the entire program. Of course, we would be completely remiss if we um, didn't talk about NCHSE in addition to careertech.org. Um, NCHSE is an amazing resource for all your pathway programs and sourced some specific health science information from there. Now, here's another resource that's specific to health science. 
The national health science standards provide a clear and consistent understanding of industry and post-secondary expectations for health science teachers and students. These standards are designed to provide the essential knowledge common across health professions to prepare and increase the number of students that are college and career ready. They are free to the public and available on their webpage. They give you a clean topical outline organized into the foundations that you see listed here on the screen. Academic foundation includes all your anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology and medical math. Communication skills includes medical terminology. Systems includes understanding levels of care, governmental organizations, research organizations and nonprofits. Employability skills includes basic soft skills helpful to health science students. Legal issues, including HIPAA, scope of practice and such. Um, ethical components, including cultural considerations. Safety practices includes infection control, environmental and personal safety issues. Teamwork includes topics specific to healthcare teams as well as handling conflict. Health maintenance practices, including self-care, behavioral health, and mental health. Technical skills include vital signs and CPR. And last but not least is IT and healthcare, dealing with EMRs, obviously, but also topics like wearable devices and apps. You can see then how incredibly robust and um, comprehensive these standards are. Use them, use them, use them. I can't say it enough. Um, if you use these as your outline, you're going to um, hit all of the major topics that you need to hit and understand how your program can be put together um, so you aren't forgetting any vital topics in your courses. NCHSE also provides a curriculum crosswalk, which can be extremely helpful in planning your courses. It takes their foundation standards and allows you to map where in your own curriculum you are covering those topics. These exercises provide transparency and accountability for the topics included and can help keep everyone on the same page regarding what is happening when during the curriculum. All right, um, okay, so now we're gonna get even more specific and we're going to talk about building a patient care technician pathway. Here are six examples of organizations that provide certification testing services. We're lucky enough today to have Suzanne to talk about the first example, American Medical Technologist, so we'll let her speak in a few minutes here. Um, but there are differences in content, services provided and associated costs for testing and certification between these organizations. So I really do recommend that you do some digging to find out which matches with any requirements your state or district might have. And I'm sure there are more out there aside from these six, but these are the most popular. And just to be transparent, RealityWorks has no affiliation with anyone and we are not promoting any pro program in particular. However, as this webinar is sponsored, through NCHSE, and we have a partner here from AMT. Um, we just wanna say that outright. Um, again, it is recommended to check out those certifying organizations who are members. So at this time, we'd like to invite our guest from the American Medical Technologist to share information that they have on their patient care technician certification. So Suzanne. Well, thank you so much, Molly. I'm really excited to be here to talk about AMT and what we offer. Um, both you and students. So um, to start off, we are American Medical Technologists, often referred to as AMT. We were established over 80 years ago by allied health professionals as a nonprofit professional certification and membership association. And we have well, as of just recently, 12 certifications, we just added um, a new one in dental, but we do have 12 that span medical, dental, and the laboratory fields. Today, obviously, we'll talk about the patient care technician, which will fall into the medical field. 
um, AMT, we have, we are accredited national certification. So if you remember Molly talking about how the nurse assistant can be a state and very state to state, we are national certification. So you can take it wherever you go. We're NCCA accredited. We are known to be integrity driven and trusted by employers because they know that when someone has an AMT certification, they're proficient in the abilities and that they know that they're gonna be able to start the job and do it day one, which also helps uh, onboarding and create a faster onboarding uh, with all the staff too. Uh, once you become AMT certified, you are automatically a member and some of the member benefits are discounted continuing education. We have over 400 hours of continuing education available. We also offer professional development, some online communities, award-winning Pulse Magazine, which comes out quarterly, which has great articles to keep everyone updated within the industry. Also, we have local and state chapters to join. We have networking, leadership opportunities, and annual conference and meeting. When it comes to the patient care technician certification, AMT offers support to both educators and students. And so when it comes to the educators, we want to know, or we want you to know that Choosing AMT certification for students is going to help your employment metrics. Employers often prefer and often require a certification because they want to know you're proficient in those skills and ability because patient care it all comes, is very important and everyone wants to ensure high quality patient care. Um, also, we support the educators and instructors through bulk discounts when it comes to practice tests to ensure students are prepared and know what to expect when going to take a certification exam. We also have tracking reports, which are great. It helps you keep track of where students are, where they've had gaps in learning, uh, monitoring their progress, and then you're able to know what knowledge and skills might be able to help kind of help them beef up that area if they have any deficits in learning. And also we offer an allied health instructor certification. So we have staff certification. Um, there is no exam for that, which everyone likes, but you do have to submit work um, history and have it approved through uh, the approval process. Um, and then when it comes to the students, we also want to make sure that we support the students through to get certified and after certification. You heard some of the benefits that come after with the membership, but even before we want to make sure that we're there for the students. And so we have study and prep tools. We um, have content study guides, reference material. We have a practice exam for specific PCT certification coming soon. And then we also have the AMT Edge. So we always say give your students the Edge, which is a free online tool. It has a series of emails and tips and online uh, support to help uh, students uh, get certified and be successful. This is an example of one of our content outline, just a section where it talks about the main work areas or areas of study, which you can see are the allied health foundations, the personal, personal patient assistance and care, clinical procedures, and then clinical patient environment. The number of questions on the exam are 200. It breaks it down by percent. And then it even breaks it down further into the detailed uh, subjects and areas under each of those uh, work areas. And with, uh, within our website, we have all of these materials and also, um, well, if you go to the next slide, I got a little ahead of myself. Oh, I thought there was one before that. There we go. It was the next one. No, you're right. It was the next one there. So for questions, you can call. You can also visit our website to learn more about what AMT offers and how we can help you uh, and your students. We have superb second to none customer service. 
Um, so definitely we look to partner with everyone. We really are excited about the opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. We always love to shine a light on our fellow uh, consortium members and AMT has been such a, a friend to us through the years. So thank you for all that information. Again, I'd echo what Molly said earlier, uh, go on the uh, consortium website and check out other entities as well. We've got many, many more out there, but AMT is just a great example. Um, so uh, looking ahead at other organizations that offer uh, technical or skills assessments, we, we would be remiss if we also did not mention the consortium offers a health science assessment. Now, it's not a right to work credential, but it does add credibility of a national certification of achievement. And it will uh, certainly satisfy that Perkins requirement um, for technical attainment as well. But there are many, many benefits for the students and here are, here are just a few of them. It's certainly gonna validate the skills that they've attained um, with standards listed on it. It's a nationally recognized end of pathway cer certificate. It's something tangible that they can take to job interviews, um, put on resumes, uh, certainly for recognition on college applications, and it just can make it much easier to articulate into those college programs. Another thing we like to mention, again, is HOSA, because uh, HOSA, as you know, has dozens of knowledge and skill competitions on many state and national levels on a wide variety of topics. Um, I did not see one specific to the um, patient care technician uh, occupation yet, but there are many similar ones that... Um, students just should take full advantage of these competitive events as a way to increase the knowledge and skills um, as they prepare for future health occupations. So just a, just a plug for HOSA as well. So now we would like to share a few uh, things that RealityWorks has for hands-on tools and curriculum specific to patient care uh, technicians. First of all, we have what we call a pathway program, and it's a packed of products we put together that can really jumpstart and make it very easy to start a brand new patient care technician program. And um, here's where you get a list of all of these hands-on learning uh, tools that teach those transferable career skills, but also they come with curricula, so you get that foundational knowledge as well. Um, these packages also are completely customizable. So if you have some parts already, but would like to add other parts, uh, you can work with us and we would love to customize it to your specific needs as well. Um, but the products that they come with the curriculum that's already, already been created and they come with uh, assessment and slide presentations, lecture notes and student activities all designed by your subject matter experts. So uh, we've tried to make it again, a one-stop shop, very easy if you're starting from ground zero and, and looking for a place to start, we can, we can help you with that. Another free resource that we have to offer is our patient care technician program implementation guide. And um, given the pathway package that's been designed, this guide really can help you dig in and it gives you suggestions for how you might set up your classroom um, when teaching this type of course. And additionally, for each of the products included, we've got estimated teaching times and the lesson topics are included. So it really can help you begin to lay out your program and see if you've got all your bases covered. Um, this is something we've taken a look at before. Um, once you plug in the breadth of content that's available, then you can begin to figure out all of the courses in your plan of study. And you can see um, where you've got uh, resources, where you might have those gaps, but you can begin to review the curriculum topics and see where all of the resources that we've got can make things interactive, engaging, and uh, best fit within the pathway. So we've, we've always liked to give as much free resources as we can. So we've got a few more things we'd like to share before we, um, we, we get to the Q&A portion today. One of the things we've got our uh, classroom is a, a free poster on healthcare careers. I can print it out and put it up for reference in your classroom. But again, it's just a great visual to help your students identify all sorts of different occupations within health science education. Um, we do offer career exploration lessons. We have, uh, oh, I think it's over 20, 25 different, different ones all on health science, uh, dental pathways, sports medicine, and we and the therapeutic services, it's a unit of, of five different lessons. So if you wanted to do a unit for a whole week, you'd have a different lesson each day. And it's a lesson within each pathway of the therapeutic services. So again, if you're looking for something for a patient care technician, that would probably be the one 
that would um, most closely fit your need for that. Uh, a few other things that we have, we have a blog and in that blog, we do have guest writers that write for us on classroom activities, uh, trending things in health science education. Uh, if we're gonna have any new uh, product launches and things like that, all of that can be found in our blog. So it's a really uh, dynamic uh, space and we'd invite you to check that out as well. Um, we also have uh, a blog, it's called Top Resources for Starting a Patient Care Technician Program. And I wanted to put that link up there specifically because of today's topic. So if you're looking to go to a blog specifically on that, that would be a, a really good uh, place for you to go. And then much like the Wednesday webinars from uh, the consortium, RealityWorks also has a webinar schedule free to anyone. You can sign up, but if you can't attend, uh, we do record everything and there are archived webinars. There are dozens of health science uh, uh, webinars on many different topics of interest. So you could just go on to the link there, uh, check out the, the new ones coming up, but certainly check out all of the archived ones uh, as well. You may find some very helpful uh, new classroom resources, activities. We try to give away a lot of free things for on all the webinars that we do as much as possible. So uh, you could check, check out that schedule. Um, because this is a national consortium for health science education webinar, we also like to shine a light on our other consortium members and Hartman Publishing has a brand new textbook for patient care technicians at the link above that they shared with us just in the past week. And when you go to that link, you can take a look inside. There's a workbook and a teacher guide available. But we have Kristen Caldron from Hartman Publishing on today. And I'm going to invite her at this time to unmute herself and introduce herself and tell us just a little bit more about this brand new resource. Hi, thank you so much. I really appreciate the chance to just say a few words. This is our uh, patient care technician book. Um, as you've noted, there are just it's a growing area, and we had instructors telling us you have nursing aid books, you have an EKG book, a phlebotomy book. How about put them all together, and you've got patient care technicians. So that's that's what we've done uh, largely. I mean, we obviously we adapted it for the fact that uh, a lot of patient care techs work in inpatient uh, as well. So this is a brand new book. It's relatively concise, which is our goal for all of our books, accessible. Um, hopefully it's about a seventh grade reading level. So we try and keep it something that could be uh, used by English language learners also. Anyway, this is, as you see on the slide, you can look us up on the web. There's a contact form if anybody would like to get a sample book. Uh, take a look or ask a question. So we really appreciate this. Thank you for the opportunity to, to tell you about this. It's an exciting new field. Thank you, Kristen. We really appreciate your sharing your resource with us. Thanks and again, I, I, you're such an ex, a good example of the many excellent vendors that are members of the consortium. Uh, we would really urge anyone participating today to go out to the consortium website and look at the resources list. Um, not only of publishers, but of associations, uh, many other uh, really good examples of, of organizations that have patient care technician resources available to you. So just wanted to make a plug for that as well. Um, so this is an interesting visual with recent data on salaries that I found from ZipRecruiter to ponder before we go into our Q&A. And as Molly said earlier, some states um, have embraced patient care technicians uh, more than others, but you can see by the map how each state looks as far as entry-level salaries go. And it's uh, really just a great gateway career to other health science employment opportunities. So we hope that we see a, a lot more patient care technician uh, programs of study coming forward. Uh, it's, it's still relatively new, but I think we're going to see more, more as we go into the future. So um, I know that we've had some questions in the Q&A and we've been trying to monitor it while we've been going along. Um, Karen, I don't know if you've got any of the questions that you, you wanna, um, uh, that you, have you found any um, as we've been going along? Yeah. Otherwise so I think one is um, what um, backgrounds can teachers have that would allow them to teach PCT? and test with AMT. Suzanne, is that one that you feel comfortable taking? Well, I'm not sure if it's kind of dual in terms of what backgrounds needed to teach PCT. 
And then what's needed to have a AHI certification from AMT. Um, I know on our website, it will detail the requirements for an AHI certification. Um, and it also, you know, we always look on an individual basis. So I do not know offhand, but I definitely would be able to look and get back to anyone that needs to know. Uh, I think the question here would be for students to test with AMT to be a certified um, patient care technician, do they have to have an approved program through your association? Yes. So to uh, we would want programs to affiliate with AMT. Okay. And what what do you see the teacher of record? What's the background for most of those teachers? Is it registered nurse? Is it medical assistant? Um, do you have it is. That, you know what that I am not sure I would I would have to check unless Susan uh, can chime in. I would have to I, I know it's varied. But I'm not yeah. sure um, if there is a, you know, a majority tend to be an RN um, or come from that background. I do think it, I do, this is Susan um, Reykjavich. Um, I, I do think it varies. Um, we, uh, there are a lot of, um, you know, nurse educators um, that take on that role. Um, we've also seen people who have been in the role themselves as a PCT sometimes will be, you know, be an instructor. Um, so I think the, the, the role varies. Um, sometimes it's, you know, I think a lot of them end up being um, nurse educators, uh, a lot of them, but there are other folks that, that also take on that role. And we know it would vary from state to state too, perhaps, you know, state um, departments of education, have their own um, teacher certification guidelines that they follow, but it, it seems that the not, if it's in line with a certified nursing assistant, I know it's a little more, or, or you know, a few different skills and that type of thing, but it seems like um, nurses would have the background to do a great job with that uh, curriculum. As well as respiratory therapists, I saw in the chat. Good. Yeah, because of the EKG, you said EKG, um, measuring EKGs is a part of some of the skills that they might be required to do. Correct. All right, I've been watching the chat some as well, and it looks like some um, of- Go ahead. Some of you are already answering each other's stuff in the chat, so it's great, mm -hmm. great conversation going on. Another question that was asked early on was, um, I believe when Molly was speaking and giving the data, which I personally love a good data session, so I appreciate that. Why are some nursing schools now adding CNA as a prerequisite for admissions? Does anybody happen to know that one? Well, I would think this is Nancy Allen, that it um, it tends to identify those students who, are, who may be serious about becoming nurses. They probably are a better prepared post-secondary student because they know what they're getting into. They've touched a patient. They've measured vital signs. They've probably given personal care, range of motion, mobility, that type of thing. Um, so I think it um, tends to identify those students who maybe um, we'll stay in the pathway. So Jessica just said that um, specifically it was Texas Tech that she has heard of doing that. It could also be Jessica that the program is very competitive already. And this is one way that they can help kind of narrow down who is in admissions for that or in race to be admitted to the nursing program. I know where Nancy is at Clemson University, where I'm not super fan of the school, but they have a phenomenal nursing program and it is highly competitive to get in there. So I could see them doing something like that as well. And I, you know, from my background, I am a nurse and I've been a nurse for a couple of decades and it was a requirement for me 
here in Minnesota before I started nursing school. So I, I think just other people have um, had some flexibility in when they've had to narrow down that, you know, because of the competitiveness. Minnesota has been competitive um, for nursing school spots for quite a long time. So I, I agree completely that I think it's to um, get really, really qualified people into those nursing programs. Yeah. Or for the nurses that are on the call, um, when you think about the fundamentals course that we took, you know, that was heavy on skills, think about, I think about, I can think back pretty far, um, how, what a gift that would have been for me if I had been a certified nursing assistant. I did work at a hospital, you know, during my um, time in nursing program, but I'm just saying that would have been quite a jump start to have already had that I'm trying to see Denise if there are some other ones that maybe have not been and um, feel free to unmute yourself if you prefer to do that as opposed to putting something in the chat we still have about 10 minutes and if you aren't shy I want... was going to say here in North Carolina, over the last four years, I've been told that all of our healthcare career majors want a baseline certification before students are admitted into the program. Not not just a nursing thing, but any of them. I know the PA school at Wake Forest University has told me that they want a baseline certification, which doesn't necessarily have to be CNA. It could be PCT. It could be phlebotomy. Just some baseline certification to show that they've worked toward healthcare and really put in some time and effort into getting into the program that they're interested in. I'm just gonna add in a few things that we are dealing with. I'm glad that y'all mentioned the advisory council. Uh, we're ha we, we have been doing the patient care tech program for four years now at Midland College. Uh, we do start them at ninth grade in our pathway. And 11th, they do become a CNA for us before they come to us as seniors. They get their phlebotomy certification, their EKG certification, and then we end out the year with patient care tech. What we're having the issue with is trying to get our community to support us so that they have somewhere to go to work at. And I I know that in my area, um, we are in desperate need of healthcare workers at all of those levels. And we have partnered with two of our main um, hospitals in both um, in the area. And they are wanting to take our students because they know the certifications, you know, and not just that, but maybe they took it and went through one of the pathways for health science that the teacher their senior year didn't offer any additional certification we they only took the um, nchse assessment but those standards are even printed on the back and because we're producing high quality students they're still getting like entry-level jobs that they could do without a certificate, right to work certification. So I think it may just be um, really, hopefully in that case for you, Stephanie, that means that your area is doing great and not, and maybe as in desperate need as um, some of the other areas, but I would just reach out to your hospitals and doctor's offices, which I'm sure you are, and um, letting them know that, hey, it's not just one certification, that your student has, but they went through all four years and earning different ones along the way. Um, Stephanie, sometimes it's just finding that right champion on the other end. We mm -hmm. uh, we know that um, one teacher that we worked with, Tony McLemore, she was in Durant, Oklahoma, and it it came it became like a competition because her students would get placement in different healthcare facilities throughout the community, and then there would be a lot of hoopla around it. They would have their picture in the newspaper or on 
social media, for hosting this student for their work-based learning experience. And so it became kind of competitive, like this doctor's office, like, well, if they're doing it, we need to do it for the visibility mm -hmm. awareness. And so that seemed to work well for Tony that um, she got them sort of, um, yeah, we can't afford not to do this. We need to grow our own and we need to support these programs. But it, it, it partnerships are hard and just building those. Um, but um, there are some web there are some archived webinars on work based learning on our website that um, I think there's three or four there that might give you some um, food for thought. And we do have a work based learning guide that we that has templates for emails to send to partners um, asking begging, encouraging them to take your students. So um, the table of contents is is on our website under um, work-based learning resource. So you can see if that might be something you'd be interested in having for your program. Hi, this is Kathy Regan from Massachusetts. I'm sorry I was late getting on the Zoom. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things that you've spoken about as far as the nursing schools requiring um, or looking for students to have their CNA. It's kind of funny because we had uh, Fitchburg uh, talk to our students and that was one of the things that we look at our students. We encourage them to go out and work. They get the experience and the nursing school said to them that it has no bearing on their acceptance into nursing programs, which I mm -hmm. tend to disagree. I, I do think that our students are much more prepared, especially like someone had mentioned the fundamentals, the first semester, the first year of nursing. So I don't agree with that. Um, but Massachusetts is not doing something like that right now. I know that the uh, associate degree programs or the associate schools, the two year schools do take the nursing assistant programs from vocational ed uh, or from vocational schools and do uh, give them college credits. Um, so that they are they are able to add that to their um, whatever 60 credit courses that they're taking um, as in their associates. Um, we currently are just doing a CNA program. Uh, our students go out on co-op senior year. A PCT is something that I have been working on for the last 15 years. I have one more year before I retire. So I'm trying to get this up and running so that our students, um, if they choose to go a different route, or for those that are here, have some sort of a purpose as far as the PCT. So I do again apologize for being late and I look forward to looking at the recording to get all of the information. We have one more question quickly. Um and this is for AMT, what are the requirements for blood draws and EKGs for the PCT certification? Um, that I have to look into and get back with who, let's see who was It was Lissa um, Bartle from Florida. Susan might know off her. Yeah, so for the, for the, um, for the RPT, um, there, you, it, the requirement is 50 blood draws um, on human um, and 10 capillary sticks. I do love that you added human in there, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just in case we're going to go out and stick our dogs, which I think would be harder than, <laughs> than a human. Although I've had some difficult sticks as a athletic trainer with um, some dehydrated athletes trying to trying to get that IV in there. Our nurses on the webinar here are much more talented than I am <laughs> with that. Um, it is about um, 4.57, but one last question is um, a question for you guys. Is it reasonable to have a PCT without CNA? Um, and Amanda mentioned clinical requirements. So I'm assuming maybe what, um, Amanda, if you want to unmute yourself and ask to see if it's um, asking about PCT clinical requirements or without the CNA clinical component. I was asking, I was kind of wondering because in one county, they closed the long-term care facility. So we no longer, I certify them as CNAs, but 
they don't have a long-term care facility anymore and they're actually closing their emergency room. So looking at maybe doing clinical placement, even though it's not really required that they have clinicals, um, putting them in there, is it reasonable that they would be prepared enough to pass that PCT exam without um, that type of experience? They have experience as a CNA? No, they won't have CNA in that county anymore. So then they're being prepared on the PCT, but you're asking without the clinical interaction, the direct patient interaction, would Correct. they be prepared? Yes, I think they would be prepared. Okay. And that EMT organization, that's who you guys actually recommend for the testing and to look over the crosswalk for curriculum? Okay. Well, for, for testing, we use Pearson View which is different. Okay. So Amanda, our friends I, from um, AMT are the ones that are um, partnered with Reality Works here for the webinar today. And they are one of the testing um, companies or programs that um, is offered with PCT. And they are very knowledgeable and friends of the consortium, which we love. And um, hopefully that kind of helped answer your question a little bit. It is five o'clock and we do want, at five o'clock Eastern time, we do wanna be mindful of the time for our friends who joined us today. We thank you so much. It was an amazing webinar.